A satellite in orbit suffers an unexplained malfunction, forcing NASA to make a life or death decision. You're always weighing it's a valuable piece of gear versus how much risk is there to it causing a catastrophe with the crew. Can NASA pull off the most audacious rescue mission in the history of shuttle flight? We weren't sure we were going to be able to do this. November 1997, Columbia Space Shuttle Flight STS-87 launches from Cape Canaveral, Florida. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia. We push back into the seat. Three times I bought your way, I'm watching the mock tapes. We're going fast to Mach 2, Mach 5, Mach 6. We went from zero to 17,500 miles per hour in only eight and one half minutes. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Columbia's mission to launch a $10 million satellite, codenamed Spartan, that will study solar flares. The mission's success will rely on the steady hand of the shuttle's robot arm operator. Every shuttle has a 50-foot robot arm on it, and what it allows us to do is to move large devices uh, from the space shuttle payload bay out into orbit. Rookie astronaut, mission specialist Kalpana Chavla takes control of the remote deployment. It is a proud moment for the first Indo-American in space. She lifts it up out of the bay, it looks good. We're all, all there at the windows watching. And as she released it, uh, we noticed that the satellite was supposed to perform a rotation, which we call the pirouette maneuver. Well, Spartan didn't pirouette. And then we all began to, to worry. For some unknown reason, the satellite is dead in space. The only thing they can do now is recover it. And as our arm operator began to drive the robot arm in, and she stopped and paused for a moment, and what caught my attention was the arm, the end of the arm bounced up and down a, a little bit. The bouncing caused her to miss the grapple. Retrieving a satellite from space with a robotic arm is not an easy task. You only have one shot. And on Chavla's one shot, unfortunately, she bumps it into a spin. So you got a picture of this now. This is a 3,000 pound satellite, about the size of a small car, very slowly turning in space. Losing a multi-million dollar satellite would be a disaster, so the crew do all they can to get it back. For the next hour, the crew valiantly tries to retrieve the satellite. Mark, we're trying the best we can. It's got a pretty good rate on it. We're just trying to match it don't have enough fuel aboard to chase it for long. The more fuel they burn, the greater the chance they're going to be stuck in orbit. The astronauts consider the possibility of catching the satellite by hand, but it's an option that is fraught with danger. Spacewalk has, you know, natural inherent risks. They have more danger than when you're sitting back inside the spacecraft. But on the other hand, Spartan is worth $10 million. Recovering something like that, you're always weighing. It's a valuable piece of gear. We want to bring it back versus how much risk is there to it hitting the space shuttle or to it causing a catastrophe with the crew. It's hard to quantify the length of time that goes into building something like a satellite. It takes years, decades, sometimes whole careers. And here, in an instant, this one is potentially slipping away. 170 miles above the Earth, Winston Scott and his colleague Takeo Doi prepare for their last ditch rescue mission. And good morning, Columbia. We sure have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, time to roll up our sleeves. All spacewalks are risky, but this one is even more dangerous than usual. 
We were improvising uh, on the fly. We didn't know how long it was going to take. To catch the satellite, the astronauts need both hands. They are forced to try an incredibly hazardous maneuver. We can't anchor ourselves with our hands. We need our hands free to catch the satellite. So we anchor our boots into foot restraints on the side of the shuttle. One mistake and the rogue satellite could knock Scott or Doy tumbling into space. Flight Commander Kevin Craigle edges the shuttle slowly towards the satellite. I can recall calling out to Kevin, OK, the satellite is aft about five feet. He would fire the jets and move us back a little bit. OK, hold, stabilize. Craigle inches the shuttle alongside Spartan. It is now within touching distance. I then gave Takao the cues that we had practiced. Stand by. Stand by. Stand by. Capture. OK. Now I've got my hit. I got my hit. Instantly, you can feel all of that mass. I knew I had a hand full of 3,000 pounds worth of structure. Scott and Doy may have hold of the satellite, but it is far from under control. OK, now, now that we've got it, Mr. Doy, let's decide what we're going to do with it. But now we have to change our hand position so that we can manipulate this satellite to the one orientation that will allow us to lock it into the bay. Because 3,000 pounds of mass could easily go out of control on it. Inch by inch, they rotate it into place. It takes three hours before it is secure inside the payload bay. We'll lock it down into place on its support structure. So uh, there's gonna be a lot of celebrating down here. Uh, just fantastic work, nice job today. We could have very easily shied away from it, but that wasn't his nature. That's not my nature, that's not the nature of astronauts. A post-flight investigation exonerates rookie astronaut Kalpana Chavla of any blame. It was a software glitch. There was nothing that Chavla could have done. Spartan eventually returns to space, where it continues to keep watch on our sun.